Okay, the next application we're going to look at is the uh, called the GIMP, which stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a, a program that can um, can be used to edit existing images or photos, uh, but you can also use it to paint or create images from scratch. Um, today we're just going to look at some basic uh, manipulation type stuff. We're going to open our panorama that we did here before in Hugin, and we're just going to crop it and give it a little bit of a tweak. So we'll uh, we'll bring up the crop tool here, on there, and we'll click and drag a box to select the region that we want to keep. We'll bring up the levels dialog here, and we'll hit auto. We'll just make some adjustments to the image. There we go. It's a bright sunny day now, as opposed to a small field sunny day that it was before. So we'll save that one. And we'll move on to something uh, a little bit more tricky. We, uh, we might open up that um, arena shot that we did before. So I'll give it some nice proportions. And we'll also bring up the curves dialog. And we'll sort of change the contrast a little bit and bring, make our darks a bit blacker. And. Uh, Make the highlights a bit brighter. It looks a lot nicer on my screen than it does on the wall there. <coughs> now if we turn off the preview, we can see the kind of difference that we've made to the image. And we'll save that one as well. And I think finally we'll we'll open those three uh, different images we made with that sunrise photo and we'll see if we can't add them together in a way that creates uh, an interesting picture. So this is going back to those blending modes that I was talking about earlier which is if you've got a stack of images um, it's about how you sort of mix those together to come up with uh, different results. So first I'm going to uh, copy each image and then paste them all into one so that I can work with them. And back here we'll paste. We see it says a, it's a floating selection. We'll click the new layer button and we'll make a new layer there that we can later come back to and uh, do things with. And copy this one as well. And paste. And make a new layer again. So we've got our three layers there. Let's get this one out of the way. I'm going to make use of um, three different, uh, four different blending modes uh, at the moment. I'm going to use normal for the uh, the Drago image, that last HDR tone mapping that we did. I'm going to put that at the very bottom, and that's going to be the base that I'm going to work from. Skip forward a little bit, so I just reorder them here to match closer to what I want. Okay, so we've got this Drago at the bottom. I'll leave him as is. We'll put our fat oil on top of that and we'll change the blending mode to uh, overlay. I'm going to make use of that image again, so I'll pop him up there and just make him invisible. So we'll switch him to overlay and we'll see. It makes a little bit of a difference, sort of brightens up the highlights a little bit. I'll turn that down to about, uh, no, I'll probably leave it at 100%. There's our Mantiuk there. And we'll put that on multiply, uh, which darkens the dark areas. And we can see if we take that off, we get our image that we had before. And then we can see what kind of difference the uh, the fat hull is doing there to uh, increase the highlights. And we'll turn that one down to about 85%, I think, uh, which still lets the uh, the sunrise there show up a fair bit. And the last thing we'll do is we'll pop the fat hull along the top again. And um, we'll give it a color blending mode, which increases the amount of color that comes through. It's probably a bit extreme there, so we'll turn that one down to, I don't know, 25% or so. Um, and that'll still allow a bit of uh, extra color to come through in the uh, the reflections and, and the sunrise there. And we'll crop it as well, just to make it interesting.
but I can see that we've ended up with something that um, is a very different image from what we started with. Uh, a little bit more impressive. We might even save it, perhaps. And there we go. That's it. There's some exciting things that we can do with uh, three different open source graphical applications.